What follows is a summary of Mark Mallett's perspective on prophecy in the Church today. We are living in a time when prophecy has perhaps never been so important, and yet, so misunderstood by the vast majority of Catholics. There are three harmful positions being taken today regarding prophetic or private revelations that, I believe, are doing at times great damage in many quarters of the Church. One is that private revelations never have to be heeded since all we are obligated to believe is the definitive revelation of Christ in the deposit of faith. Another harm being done is by those who tend to not only put prophecy above the magisterium, but give it the same authority as sacred scripture. And last, there is the position that most prophecy, unless uttered by saints or found without error, should be mostly shunned. Again, all these positions above carry unfortunate and even dangerous pitfalls. I would have to agree with Archbishop Rhino Fisichella who said. Confronting the subject of prophecy today is rather like looking at wreckage after a shipwreck. In the last century, in particular, Western theological development has not only downplayed the significance of mysticism in the Church, but even the supernatural regarding Christ's own miracles and divinity. This has had a tremendous sterilizing effect upon the living Word of God, both the Logos, generally referring to the inspired written Word, and Rima, generally spoken words or utterances. There is a common fallacy that, with the death of John the Baptist, prophecy ceased in the Church. It has not ceased, rather, it has taken on different dimensions. Prophecy has changed immensely throughout history, especially with regard to its status within the institutional church, but prophecy has never ceased. Think of the deposit of faith as a car. Wherever the car goes, we must follow, for sacred tradition and scripture contain the revealed truth that sets us free. Prophecy, on the other hand, is the headlights of the car. It has the dual function of both warning and illuminating the way. But the headlights go wherever the car goes, that is. From the Catechism of the Catholic Church. It is not private revelation's role to improve or complete Christ's definitive revelation, but to help live more fully by it in a certain period of history. Christian faith cannot accept revelations that claim to surpass or correct the revelation of which Christ is the fulfillment. Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger said. The prophet is someone who tells the truth on the strength of his contact with God, the truth for today, which also, naturally, sheds light on the future. Now, there are times when the church passes through periods of great darkness, persecutions, and insidious attacks. It is at times like these that, despite the interior lights of the car that infallibly navigate, the headlights of prophecy are necessary to illuminate the way insofar as showing us how to live the hour. An example would be the remedies provided by Our Lady of Fatima, Consecration of Russia, First Saturdays, and the Rosary as means to circumvent war, disasters, and the errors that led to communism. It should become clear at this moment then that, while not adding to the definitive revelation of the Church, these so-called private revelations have had the power to alter the future if heeded. How can they not be important? Furthermore, how can we call them private revelations? There is nothing private about a prophetic word intended for the whole Church. Even controversial theologian, Karl Rohner, also asked. Whether anything God reveals can be unimportant. Theologian Hans Urs von Balthasar adds. One can therefore simply ask why God provides revelations, continuously, in the first place if, they hardly need to be heeded by the Church. So important was prophecy in St. Paul's view, that after his beautiful discourse on love in which he says if I have the gift of prophecy, but do not have love, I am nothing. St. Paul in 1 Corinthians goes on to instruct. Pursue love, but strive eagerly for the spiritual gifts, above all that you may prophesy. In his list of the spiritual offices, St. Paul places prophets only second to that of the apostles and before evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Indeed, Christ fulfills this prophetic office, not only by the hierarchy, 
but also by the laity, according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Popes, particularly of the past century, have not only been open to this charism, but encouraged the Church to listen to their prophets. Cardinal Ratzinger said that, in every age the Church has received the charism of prophecy, which must be scrutinized but not scorned. He to whom that private revelation is proposed and announced, ought to believe and obey the command or message of God, if it be proposed to him on sufficient evidence. Pope Benedict XVI said that for God speaks to him, at least by means of another, and therefore requires him to believe, hence it is, that he is bound to believe God, who requires him to do so. Pope Francis states that those who have fallen into this worldliness look on from above and afar, they reject the prophecy of their brothers and sisters. Perhaps because of the genuine crisis we've endured of a deficit in anointed preaching from the pulpit, many souls have turned to prophetic revelations not only for edification, but direction. But a problem that sometimes arises is the weight to which these revelations are given, and the lack of prudence and prayer that should accompany them. Even if the prophecies come from a saint. Mystical theologian, Rev. Joseph Yanutsi, who is perhaps one of the foremost experts in the Church today on the interpretation of prophetic revelations, writes. It may come as a shock to some that nearly all mystical literature contains grammatical errors and, on occasion, doctrinal errors. Saint Hannibal, the spiritual director to Italian mystic Luisa Picaretta and Melanie Calvert, the La Salette visionary, warns, Conforming to prudence and sacred accuracy, people cannot deal with private revelations as if they were canonical books or decrees of the Holy See. For example, who could ratify in full all the visions of Catherine Emmerich and Saint Brigitte, which show evident discrepancies? There are also those who take the position that, if there are inaccuracies, even grammatical or spelling errors, this implies, therefore, that an alleged seer is a false prophet for God does not make mistakes. Unfortunately, those who judge prophetic revelations in this injurious and narrow way are not few in number. Reverend Yanutsi points out that, in his extensive research in this field, although in some passages of their writings, the prophets may have written something doctrinally erroneous, a cross-reference of their writings reveals that such doctrinal errors were unintentional. That is, the very errors that were initially discovered in many prophetic texts that were later approved, are elsewhere contradicted with sound doctrinal truths by the same prophets in the same prophetic texts. Such errors, then, were simply omitted prior to publishing. Again, this may shock some readers who say, hey? You can't edit God. But that is to misunderstand completely the nature of what prophecy is, and how it is transmitted, through a human vessel. We already have infallible prophecies as such, they're called sacred scripture. To put the seers of Fatima, Garabandal, Medjugorje, La Salette, and other seers on this same plane of expectation is a false expectation if not doctrinal error. The appropriate approach is to refrain from interpreting the pure letter and seek the intention of the prophet by interpreting the body of prophetic words in the light of the deposit of faith. Everything God reveals is received through and according to the subject's dispositions. The Reverend Joseph Yanutsi has said. In the history of prophetic revelation it is not uncommon that the prophet's limited and imperfect human nature is impacted by a psychological, moral or spiritual event that may hinder the spiritual enlightenment of God's revelation from shining perfectly in the prophet's soul, whereby the prophet's perception of the revelation is involuntarily altered. Mariologist, Dr. Mark Miravalli notes. Such occasional occurrences of flawed prophetic habit should not lead to the condemnation of the entire body of the supernatural knowledge communicated by the prophet, if it is properly discerned to constitute authentic prophecy. This is all to say that the approach toward prophecy in the Church today by some is not only short-sighted, but at times merciless. The hastiness to label seers as false prophets, even while investigations into alleged apparitions are ongoing, is sometimes astonishing, particularly when there are obvious good fruits. An approach which looks for any little error, 
any slip in virtue or judgment as a justification to completely discredit a seer is not the approach of the Holy See when it comes to discerning prophecy. The Church is generally more patient, more deliberate, more discerning, more forgiving when taking into consideration the entire body of revelations of an alleged prophet. The following wisdom, one would think, should cause vocal critics to take a more cautious, humble, and like-minded to the magisterium approach to alleged phenomenon. For if this endeavor or this activity is of human origin, it will destroy itself. Acts chapter 5 reminds us, if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them, you may even find yourselves fighting against God. Whether we like it or not, prophecy is going to play a greater role in our times, both good and bad. For Jesus warned that many false prophets will arise and deceive many, and Saint Peter adds in Acts chapter 2. It will come to pass in the last days. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions. It would be a mistake to play it safe and simply disregard all prophecy, or conversely, rush to cling to seers or visionaries with the misguided notion that they will infallibly lead us through these times. We have an infallible leader already, Jesus Christ. And he speaks and continues to speak in the harmonious voice of the magisterium. The key to prophecy then is to get in the car, turn on the lights, and trust the Holy Spirit to lead you into all truth, since the car is driven by Christ himself. Thank you for supporting my channel. Please like, comment and subscribe. May God bless you and keep you. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us.